Okay, to warm up, we're gonna start off uh, running in place. And I think I need to turn this down or you're not gonna be able to see what my feet are doing later on. Running in place to start. Okay, I do 30 second rounds of these. And then punches. I just do jab, cross hook, uppercut because then I can talk to you while I do it and I have to think about it. You can do whatever punches you want, I don't care. But what you need to keep, the important thing is you need to keep your legs moving so that you're getting warm and you need to keep your hands up because if you're not protecting your head, you're not doing karate warm up. You might be doing, I don't know, some other kind of warm up. But if your hands are down, it has nothing to do with karate. Okay, then I'm gonna, with my hands up, shuffle forward. And when I get to the front of my space, jab cross and shuffle back. And when I get to the back of my space, jab cross. Other side. And next thing I have written down, ladder steps. And kicks front side back. Make sure even when you're doing this that your hands are up. Otherwise, whatever you're doing, it might be a warm up, but it's not a martial arts warm up. Okay, so two more times through, 30 second rounds. Running, punches, shuffle front to back, knees, ladder steps, and kicks. At that point, check your heart rate. It needs to be over 120. If it's not 120, do one more set, do a fourth set and crank up the intensity. Stop the video, and then when you come back, we'll stretch. So here, reach up. Reach for the floor. Over to one side, grab your ankle, pull your chest to your knee. And then down in a side stretch. Turn, stretch your hip flexor. Straighten out your legs. Toes are all facing in the same direction. Chin is up, back is flat. Reach your chest toward your front knee, stretch your hamstring. Come to the center, toes straight forward, push your knees up. Other side, grab your ankle. Down in the side stretch. Turn, stretch your hip flexor. Straighten out your legs. Chin up, stretch your hamstring. And then have a seat. One foot out, 
pull the other one across. So right now I have my right knee up. So I take my left elbow, put it on the outside of my right knee and push my knee across. So I have the stretch, I'm feeling the stretch here. Other side. Feet out. Make sure your toes are pointed up. Reach over to one side, grab your toes. Take the other hand, reach up over. So you're pulling your ribs down towards your leg. Other side. Okay, then make sure your toes are up and your chin is up, reach your elbows toward the floor. Pull your feet in, heels on the floor, rock back and forth a little bit. Put your hands down, straighten out your legs. Okay, then we have three exercises to do. I'm gonna show you all three of them what I'm looking for. And then you're going to set a timer and do them each for one minute. The first one is a squat with a front kick. So then I do a squat, I start here. My feet are a little bit more than shoulder width apart, but it's got more to do with how flexible, long and flexible your legs are than how wide your shoulders are. Because in order to, be, to do a squat, my weight's gotta be on my heels and I drop my weight as if I'm putting my butt on a chair behind me, so here. It's not here, but my shoulders are over my hips. So I'm gonna squat, bring my feet together, front kick. Squat, bring my feet together, front kick. Squat, front kick. Squat, front kick. Okay, that's the first one. The second one, okay, I'm gonna do, you can do a side kick from the floor. But when I do a side kick from the floor, I'm down here, I'm on one hip, one elbow. I have my other hand up here, it's protecting my face, and I throw the side kick. I can throw it here, or I can push my hip up off the floor so that I'm getting more power and more stretch. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do three push-ups. One, two, three. Drop to my hip. One, two, three. Then on the other side. One, two, three. Drop to my hip. One, two, three. And the last thing, one that I'm doing is a sit up. So I'm gonna start here, sit up, punch, punch. I'm not coming all the way up here when I punch. I'm stopping at 45. So I tag my shoulder blades to the floor. I come up to 45, punch, punch. Tag, punch, punch. Okay, so now you know how to do them all. I want you to set a timer. You can set a timer for three minutes or you can set it for one minute and reset it in between. But you're gonna do a minute of squat front kick, a minute of three push-ups with turn to three side kicks, and then a minute of sit up with punches. Okay, this month you are getting your stripe for speed. White stripe like the speed of lightning. Okay, so we're gonna start with front kicks. We're gonna break them down. We're gonna start them slowly as we break them down. You're gonna hold on to something as we start slowly. I know you know how to do this, but I want you to hold on so that you're focused on the technique. Once we get to speed, you won't be holding on anymore, okay? It's front facing my target, hips are square to my target. If I turn my hips off to the side so that they're off the diagonal, it's not a front kick anymore, it's just a halfway roundhouse kick. So if I'm kicking you here, my hips and shoulders have to be square to you. So I'm gonna hold on, I'm gonna turn my standing foot almost to 45 degrees, knee comes up, I push. This is not a useful front kick. It's gotta have a push in it. So hand is up, knee comes up, push in, down. Knee comes up, push in, down. So if I'm facing you, you can see that my hips and my shoulders stay square to you. This is not a good front kick. I'm, I'm off balance, so I hit something and I'm gonna get pushed back. I need to be square to you, so when I rotate my hips in, I push and I knock down the target instead of it knocking me down. 
Okay, so we're gonna do now some front kicks, back leg and front leg, okay? Front leg is obviously faster because it comes up off the floor much faster. Back one's got more power because there's more rotation. And if I need to cover distance, I need to be coming off my back leg. So we're gonna do some of both. And I want you to pay attention to what's faster and what's slower. Okay, so we're gonna start with back leg. So I'm gonna start in my guard stance and I'm gonna do back leg front kicks, traveling towards you. One, two, three, four. And that's all I can fit, so I have to go back. One, two, three, four. Okay, then I'm gonna do some Front leg front kicks. These come off the floor much faster because it's just coming from here. If I'm doing a back leg front kick, even if my weight is already on this leg, I've got to get the foot from back here all the way to travel that distance. When I'm doing a front leg kick, weight's here, all I'm doing is picking the foot up and kicking. So it happens much more quickly. One, two, three, four, five. And other side, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so I want you to grab a partner and your partner is gonna tell you speed or distance. Okay, so you're gonna get a new guard stance. And if your partner calls out speed, you're gonna throw the kick with your front leg. If they call out distance, you're gonna kick with your back leg and come back to your guard stance. Okay, so I'll call out a few of you to start. So you're in your guard stance, speed, speed, speed. Now this should have all been with your front leg. Distance, that was your back leg. Speed, speed, distance. Okay, do about, I don't know, a dozen or so of those with your partner and then trade jobs and let them do it too and then we'll do some more stuff. Okay, so you guys all know what plyometrics are, right? So when you do plyometrics, the goal is you hit the floor and it's like it's hot. So as soon as your feet touch, they push off again. We're gonna do the same thing with the front kick. So I'm gonna throw a front kick and I put my foot down and as soon as it touches, it's gonna launch again. So I'm not going kick, plant my weight, kick. Because if I'm sparring or defending myself and I do that, I'm gonna kick and as I plant my weight, I'm gonna get hit. So I'm gonna kick and while they're still processing that one, I'm gonna kick again. Okay, so we're gonna do five of those on each, five sets on each side. One, two, three, four, five. And then the other side. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so now what you need to do is you need to get a partner. And your partner's gonna hold a target for you. They're gonna hold it. I don't want these to be high kicks. I want them to be useful kicks, which means they're coming straight off your hip. This looks cool, but there's not a lot of power in it because your hips aren't rotating. So you're gonna hold the pad right about the height of your hips. And you're gonna throw the first kick, touch down, second kick. Okay, you're gonna do five on each side with target. Yep, go ahead and do those. I'll give you time. And then I'll have another job for you to do it. Okay, so what they're gonna do now, they're gonna hold that target. And you're gonna kick. And you're gonna throw the first kick. And as soon as you make contact with the first kick, they're going to snap the fingers of the other hand. And when they're done snapping, they're gonna pull the, pull the pad away. So you're gonna kick, they're gonna snap, they're gonna pull the pad away. Kick, snap, pull the pad away. Kick, snap, pull the pad away. So what you need to do is you need to get that second kick up before they snap their fingers. Okay, so they hold it up. You kick, snap, pull it away. Your goal is to kick it before they snap and take it away. Okay, for a sparring technique, we're gonna work on an offensive side kick. So you need to grab your chair. We're gonna do it to start with the chair because I wanna make sure everybody's got all their details. I'm starting here, chair's here. My foot can be facing forward to start when I chamber. 
as long as when I turn to kick, I turn my foot away from the target. So I'm gonna bring my knee up, turn my foot away from the target, my butt and my heel towards the target, and I'm gonna kick, and then I'm gonna re-chamber and stall on that re-chamber for a second. So I don't wanna just kick and drop. I'm gonna bring it up, kick, hold it there for a second. So we'll do five on each side. One, two, three, four, five. And then the other side. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, the reason that we're holding it out there, let me just get my chair out of the way. The reason that we're holding it out there for a, a, a fraction of a second is to keep a distance between us and the person that we're sparring with. Because if I, I'm sparring with somebody and I throw my sidekick and I drop my foot right in, if I hit them, they're coming right over the top already with the, with the punch to my head. If I keep my foot out there they can't, for a second, they can't get in as close, and if they do come in, I can kick them again. So I throw my sidekick, I wait. I either block them or I kick again. Okay, so what I want you to do is I want you to grab a partner. I want your partner to have um, a target. The target can be a focus pad if you have it, a small pillow, a piece of paper. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna start here. Your partner's gonna hold the target. You're gonna kick and keep your side kick out for a second. Because what they're gonna do is they're gonna hold the target and as soon as you kick, they're gonna try to hit, step in and hit you. So if you drop your foot too soon, they're gonna step in and hit you. So you're gonna bring it up, kick and wait. Kick and wait kick and wait while they're trying to hit you in the head. Okay, do a few on each side. And then what I want you to do, still with your same partner, they're gonna offer you a target and you're gonna kick and pull your foot in to keep them a distance. And as they start coming closer to you, you're gonna kick them again. So I'm gonna kick, wait, kick again. Kick, wait, kick again. Kick, wait, kick again. And then on the other side. Kick, keep my distance, kick again, or keep them at distance. Kick, keep the distance, kick again. Kick, keep the distance, kick again. Okay, we're gonna do one thing to make it a little bit more offensive now. Not offensive like you're being obnoxious or it smells bad, but offensive as if you're going after them rather than defensive. I'm going to slide forward. I'm not going to slide forward this way because that takes time. As I pick my foot up, I'm going to drag this one across the floor. Um, don't jump because if you're in the air when you hit something, when you make contact, their backup mask is going to knock you over instead of the other way. So what I want you to do now is I want you to par partner to hold your target and you're going to slide into it and then keep your knee up for a second to keep them at distance. Slide into it, knee stays up. Slide into it, knee stays up. And then the same thing on the other side. Slide in, knee stays up. Slide in, knee stays up. Okay, so now I want you to get your partner and they're gonna move around you and they're gonna move in and out. And as they come close to you, you're gonna chase them down with that kick. Keep the chamber up to keep them at distance and then either kick them again or get out of the way so you can throw another technique. Okay, your review form right now is action karate form two. So we're gonna do it once, really slow, just so that we all know that we're on the same page with the form. Action Karate Form 2. One, 
two, three, four, five, one, two, three. Make sure you start with your left hand first here. One, two, three, four, and set. Okay, so we're working on speed. Um, what I want you to do is I want you to do that form five times. Um, stop the video, get somebody to come and watch you do it. You can do it five times. The first time is gonna be so painfully slow that you're barely moving. Okay, the, each time is gonna get a little bit faster. So by the last time you do it, you really gotta be moving fast. You can't get sloppy. Okay, if you were sending me video that you did this class, what I want is your, at least your slowest and your fastest action karate form twos on video. I wanna know that you actually went slow on the slow one and that you went as fast as you possibly could without getting sloppy on the fast one, five times. Okay, we have two self-defenses to review today. These are both from the Karate Kid Beginners curriculum. So you guys learn these when you're blue, white belts or blue belts. This is not new, this is review. The first one, you start with your hands up. I don't want any trouble. Somebody grabs your wrist. Now if I step back with the opposite foot, nothing changes. If I step back with the foot under the hand they grabbed, I either, either they let go because I pulled my hand away or they lose their balance and their face comes towards my hand. So whichever one of those happens, that's a good outcome. So I start here, I don't want any trouble. They grab my hand. Whichever hand they grab, I step back with the foot underneath it. This hand comes up as if I was gonna do a high block and it's gonna slide down my arm. I'm, I'm sorry, as if I was doing a low block. It's gonna slide down my arm and it's gonna hit their wrist. Then I'm gonna punch, kick, cover up. Okay, so from the other direction here, I don't want any trouble. They grab my hand, I step back, bring my hand to my ear, slide down, hit their wrist. Punch, kick, cover up. Okay, that's the first one. The second one is two hand choke from the front. Now, if I'm gonna ask you a question, what, happened, what do you need to do if somebody's choking you? You know the answer, you need to breathe. There's lots of different ways to breathe. The way that we're gonna do it right now is the self-defense that the beginners are learning this cycle. So you start with your hands up, somebody chokes you. You bring your arms up, and you turn your hands so that your elbows come down into the soft part of their arms. You drop your weight. That lets your, you, you use your backup max so they let go. You push, kick them away. If they're still close enough to hit, punch and kick again, and then cover up. If when you kick them, it makes them drop or turn and run, then all you have to do is cover up. So we start here, hands up. They come further up, break the choke, push. It's a palm strike. Right here, find your collarbone. The palm strike is right under the collarbone. So, arms up, drop your weight, break the choke, push, front kick, punch, kick, cover up. Okay, so now what you're gonna do is you need to do them for speed. Because if somebody attacks you, and you think, hmm, what do I need to do? They're choking me. I need to put my hands up. I need to, by that point, you're gonna be unconscious. And no matter how much self-defense you think you know, is not gonna help. So we're gonna go as fast as we can. So we start here. The first one is somebody grabs your wrist. Second one, somebody chokes you. fast as you can. So what I want you to do is, I want you to get a partner, and I want you to do this two ways with your partner. The first time you're gonna do it, you're gonna put your hands up, and your partner's just gonna tell you what they're doing. So if they say front choke, you gotta break the choke, punch, kick, cover up, as fast as you can, without getting sloppy. If it's sloppy, it's not gonna be useful for self-defense. Or when you put your hands up, they say choke, and then you do that self-defense, as fast as you can without being sloppy. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna put your hands up and you're gonna close your eyes. 
and your partner's going to attack you. Okay. When they attack you, the first thing you need to do, even before you break the choke, is open your eyes. Because if you don't open your eyes, if this is your mom or your little brother or your grandpa choking you, you might hurt them. If it's somebody in real life trying to choke you, well, they're trying to hurt you, so that's what happens. But not somebody who's giving you the courtesy of helping you practice, we don't want to hurt them. So you're going to stand, hands up, with your eyes closed, and your partner's going to attack you, either by grabbing your wrist or by choking you. And you're going to open your eyes and do the self-defense as fast as you can. Okay, I want your partner to attack you at least five times. Okay, get your chucks. We're gonna start with a single chuck. Watch out for the light on the ceiling, this chain on the ceiling fan. Courtesy, bring it here, bring it to your right shoulder. I'm gonna turn to the right side, two down and ups, one, two, two triangles. Catch underneath, bring it to the other side, two down and ups, two triangles. Catch underneath, bring it back to the right, four figure eights and catch. One, two, three, four, catch. Step forward, left foot, left hand, high block, punch. Front kick, pump front kick, low block. Now I'm gonna back up, that you don't actually have to do that, but my chuck is gonna start on my right hip, it's gonna go over my head and come back to my left hip. And while I do that, I'm gonna turn, come back to horse stance, hip, shoulder. So I'm making a triangle. So what I'm doing is I'm doing hip, hip, shoulder. Okay, from here, over, hip, hip, shoulder. So one, one more time, high block punch, front kick, pump front kick, low block, drop it to your right hip, Spin, bring it to your left hip, hip, shoulder. So you've done a triangle. Then get your other chop. We're gonna do the same thing with two hands. So I start here, courtesy. Bring the chucks to my shoulder, turn to the right corner. Two times down and up. One, two, two triangles. Turn to the left corner, two times down and up. One, two. Two triangles. Turn back to the front. Four figure eights and catch. One, two, three, four, catch. Left foot, left hand. High block, punch, front kick, pump front kick, low block. Now I'm gonna bring both chucks to my right hip. Come over the top. Bring the right one to my other hip and then they both come up. So I'm ready with both chucks up to go again. Okay, so one more time. Courtesy, shoulders. One, two, one, two. One, two, one, two. One, two, three, four, catch. High block punch. Front kick, pump front kick, low block. Chucks are on your right hip. Spin all the way around to a horse stance. Chucks are on your left hip now. Bring the one in your right hand to your right hip and bring them both up. Okay, I want you to practice that. This is, this is not new. You learned it when you were green belt, but I just added it to this set. So I want you to practice that a lot. Okay, now you need your comments. This, this month, you're, you're getting your stripe for speed, which we worked on earlier in the class. You're getting your star for perseverance. And really here, this is where perseverance comes in, because you guys are probably thinking, I know action karate form eight. This is nothing new. Why do I have to spend my time doing it? Because we're adding a weapon to it. You can always make your, your form better. You can improve your stances. You can improve your lockout. You can improve how your body is positioned. And then you can improve how you're handling the weapon and how you add it to the form. So perseverance here is putting the time in to make this form perfect. Okay, this is not a new form for you guys. So we start here with the action karate form eight. So it's the action karate form eight part of comma set. Courtesy, chucks, commas come up, cross in the front, you're breaking a choke, step back with your right foot. Two, hands come to cup and saucer on your right hip, side kick chamber. Three, side kick, 
I'm gonna land in a front stance facing the side of the room. That forces me to have, when I turn, my front stance is gonna be wide enough. Next count, I'm gonna turn, cut down with my right hand. Next count, cut down with my left hand. I have to move back or I'm gonna jam my toes up on the brakes. Next count, my right foot comes in, it indexes, and then it goes back and I kneel. And as I kneel, I punch slowly, and then I punch one more time. Okay, so we start here, courtesy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then I'm going to do it from the other direction. So courtesy, make sure I don't do the chain. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven. Okay, so we just talked about perseverance. I want you to practice that much of it at least five times.